So, Ryan, uh, you have uh, written two news pieces, uh, reported out uh, two pieces in the past uh, 10 days that may end up being uh, some of the most consequential reporting that we have seen uh, this year, maybe even uh, before then, because it has uh, fundamentally uh, shifted the trajectory of the Kavanaugh nomination um, and, um, and and that you know, it all remains to be seen as to where that ultimately leads. But this seemed to be a, a done deal. And then you reported out on a letter uh, that we now know is um, uh, from a uh, Dr. Ford, who is a, a professor of psychology, um, reporting an incident that she had allegedly had uh, with uh, Brett Kavanaugh. Um, just... Fill us in on the details. Is there anything you think that folks aren't aware of in terms of that first letter that went to Dianne Feinstein? Was it just to Dianne Feinstein and uh, the Democrat is true uh, congresswoman in California? Did anybody well, else know about that? Go ahead. I, three, she made three attempts to reach out. First was July 6th to Eshoo. Uh, is, is it Eshoo or Eshoo? You're from out there. Um, doesn't matter. Uh, separately, she reached out to the Washington Post tip line in July. Uh, and then third, uh, July 30th, she reached out to uh, Feinstein. So, you know, there were three different efforts. And the Mercury News reported yesterday that this coincided with her telling friends that she had made the decision to go forward. So when she reached out to, to Democrats on the Hill, and to the Washington Post, she had wrestled with the, the decision and, and decided to make the plunge, as, as she called it. O- over the next month, uh, she, she, she backed off of that and had second thoughts. But when she reached out, she, was, um, you know, she had made the decision that she, this was a risk she was going to take. And that, now, that Ryan, might be something that people don't quite understand. So do you have a sense in the course of your reporting – what it was that made her reconsider in that interim period between when she first reached out to those three entities and then uh, when she decided to go public because um, reporters were starting to uh, had, had found out her name. What, what what do you have a sense of what changed in that interim period? So R- Ronan Farrow and Jane Mayer have uh, done the most extensive reporting on this particular question. And what what they say is that uh, Feinstein's thinking was that she wanted to focus on legal rather than uh, personal issues. Uh, she Feinstein also thought that the, uh, the 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 incident was too old, that the attack was too old, and that it wouldn't uh, have an have an impact on the the confirmation process. And so we know that. From Farrow and Mayor's reporting, that that's what Feinstein's thinking was. We know that Feinstein's office and and um, and Dr. Ford were in contact, so we can presume that 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 she's uh, smart enough that she was able to deduce that that's you know where the the office was headed. Uh, and then separately, she watched as the 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 confirmation picked up momentum, and like you said, it looked like it was going to be a done deal. And so she said, "Well, they don't even you know they don't even want." This testimony, uh, you know, if they don't think it's going to have an impact and he's going to get confirmed anyway, why destroy my life for that? Um, has Feinstein's reaction since your report came out and since uh, the New Yorker report came out, has that tracked with the way that you read uh, the New Yorker report? In other words, has she uh, engaged in any type of revision from the perspective, from, from your perspective? Some of it, but, but other times she doesn't. So she was asked on the, in the Capitol recently, you know, why, you know, did, did you, you know, speak with her? Uh, she said she couldn't remember. Um, and she was asked why, you know, why, why didn't you share the, the, you know, the information with other senators? And she said, Oh, I'll have to check on that. And then she, she came back off the Senate floor and said, well, it was because it was confidential. Um, and so there is no question, meanwhile, that the, at, at points 
along the road, uh, Dr. Blasey Ford has said that she wanted to, you know, to to stay uh, anonymous. And in her first letter that she wrote to Feinstein, she says, you know, I'd like to stay, uh, I'd like this to stay confidential until we've had a chance to speak. Um, so, you know, she had never said, go ahead and um, share share my story. But it appears that um, Feinstein did not encourage her uh, to come out and tell her story. Okay. All right. Fair enough. And I don't want to spend too much time on Feinstein's right. role in this because this has gone uh, beyond that. But it is interesting to understand the timing. And um, we've also heard from uh, Blasey Ford's uh, a lawyer who says that um, uh, she's happy with the way that Feinstein right. uh, handled it. So, uh, but it, but it is interesting to get a sense of the different players as to how resonant they thought this this would be. It has now um, caused a, um, a a hearing that's going to take place on Monday. Reporting that came out on Tuesday said as of Tuesday afternoon in the New York Times, um, uh, the professor has yet to respond to the invitation on Monday. What? Um, before we get to the other story, which has has uh, you know could very well be uh, uh, you know the, the the nail in Kavanaugh's uh, coffin, and that is a, a reportedly another letter, and we'll we'll talk about that. Um, do you have a sense of what of of what the Republican response? I mean, let, let me ask you this: the obvious Republican response is to uh, protect Kavanaugh to defend. Are there any dissenters from that? Are there any people in the Republican uh, side of things who think this isn't necessarily a negative, um, a an open Supreme Court seat helped Donald Trump win in 2016? Perhaps this will make Republican voters see the stakes that's involved if Kavanaugh is taken down. Uh, and we'll get another bite at this apple in the lame duck worst case scenario. Are there any Republicans out there who you perceive might have that uh, attitude towards this? Uh, you know, it's it's hard to say whether or not. And I don't know. If I'm sorry, Ryan, we can barely we can barely hear you. We just need you to I, so talk. I don't, I don't know if McConnell uh, is thinking that way. I, I, I wondered that I had I had that thought myself. Um, but it's not a, it's not a presidential election. Um and so the question is, would you get people who are low information, people who weren't going to vote as it were, but now that Republicans have failed to nominate this Kavanaugh guy to the Supreme Court, that now they're going to go out and vote for Republicans? That That's a difficult needle for McConnell to try to thread. But I, I do think that uh, McConnell will not let this seat um, pass without being filled with a, a right-wing zealot. I mean, he might... If Kavanaugh goes down, he might have to um, go to go to Collins and Murkowski and say, "Okay, just tell us who you will confirm in the lame duck, and we'll do it." Right, um, and McConnell, I guess, would not necessarily be the only person, right, in the Republican side. I mean, is there anybody on the Republican side that you've come across that that might have that disposition? That uh, I just saw a, a poll uh, earlier this week that uh, said. Republican voters uh, are of two minds. One, they don't think that uh, there's going to be a blue wave because Donald Trump has told them that. And two, they don't see the stakes in this. Um, I don't know what could be bigger stakes than at least the perception that Democrats could take the Senate and therefore stymie a, uh, a pick. I don't think that'll happen. But uh, it seems like it's a potential sell. I'll tell you what, Ryan, we're going to take a break. When we come back on the other side, I want you to tell me if there's any Republicans that you've come across that uh, espouse that view. And then I want to talk about the what could very well be the second most even more damning or equally as damning uh, accusations of Brett Kavanaugh that deal with his time um, as either a clerk for Alex Kaczynski or um, a, uh, a mentee of Alex Kaczynski, a, a federal judge who had to step down because of inappropriate sexual uh, relations or um, approaches with uh, his clerks. we got to take a quick break. I'll be right back. Sam Cedar, Ring of Fire Radio.